Uh, hello, um, my name is John Scassonso, and, and I'm glad you tuned into this podcast. Uh, the purpose of this podcast is to uh, discuss Zambia's financial problems and how we can resolve them. Uh, Zambia's uh, financial problems and how we can resolve them. Uh, in this podcast, I examine the financial position of the Republic of Zambia after 10 years of the PF government. And my main source of the data is a monetary policy uh, statement issued by the Bank of Zambia on Wednesday, February 17, 2021. Uh, I present a point-by-point -point, uh, financial picture and a summary. Then I conclude uh, with thoughtful recommendations um, for Zambia. Uh, so, list of issues, the problems I want to talk about. I examine and explain eight main issues, including the fundamentals of the economy, uh, the narrow fiscal space, uh, inflation and projections, uh, government spending and fundraising capacity, private sector credit, uh, government data and external support, uh, the current account uh, balance, and the use of reserves. Uh, they sound uh, a little bit out there, but I'll do my best to try and explain them uh, so that even a lay person uh, with no economics background can be able to understand the financials of the country and the nature of the problems we have and how we can wrap our minds to resolve them. Uh, the first issue I want to talk about are the fundamentals of the economy. Uh, the fundamentals of the economy, what are the fundamentals of the economy? Uh, the fundamentals of the economy are simply those factors that help to understand how the economy works. Uh, the fundamentals of the economy are the drivers, the main factors that make a particular economy to work. And those, by examining those drivers, we are looking at the growth rate and what's going to happen in those factors. So now here is what uh, the Bank of Zambia uh, told us back in February. Uh, on page one, they said in the medium term, growth is projected to be uneven and highly uncertain. In the medium term, growth is projected to be uneven and highly uncertain. The Bank of Zambia basically told us, that based on the economic conditions, the assumptions of the economic recovery program, the ERP, were both flawed and unfounded. Uh, the economy's fundamentals cannot guarantee gross domestic growth uh, uh, that, is proje well, that was projected to materialize in the three fiscal years from 2021 to, uh, to 2023 in the PFERP. The economic situation, in other words, is very precarious. So when you look at these rosy uh, uh, booklets called the Economic Recovery Program, they offer this picture of where they think that the country should move. But we do have the facts at the Bank of Zambia. The Bank of Zambia said in the medium term, growth is projected to be uneven and highly uncertain. So it means that the economy of Zambia basically will be about devoid of growth in the particular period, regardless of what those in government tell us. Those are the facts from the Bank of Zambia. So secondly, the second issue is the narrow fiscal space. Narrow fiscal space uh, simply is uh, the capacity of the government to fund its ongoing obligations. Uh, it means that the, the uh, narrow fiscal space speaks of um, the, the, the limited resources uh, to go around meeting budgetary needs for the country. Uh, again, on page two, uh, the Bank of Zambia report said, <clears throat> uncertainty surrounding the resurgence of COVID-19 infections and the narrow fiscal space for pose significant downside risks to this growth outlook. So the growth outlook was uneven and highly unlikely but then the Bank of Zambia uh, told us that there were two main uh, issues within um, 
that. And the, the first one, of course, was the resurgence of the COVID. But we don't have the resurgence of the COVID in the Zambia. So that, in part, was hypothetical uh, at that point. Uh, it hasn't yet happened. Uh, therefore, it's immaterial. Uh, on the other hand, the narrow fiscal space is from the accumulation of poor government financial decisions that have now restricted government's capacity to intervene or foster GDP growth. So the fiscal narrow space means that government's hands are tied to do something major or significant in the economy to foster growth. That is a fact from the Bank of Zambia. Uh, that's a narrow fiscal space. Uh, number three issue is inflation and projections. Inflation and projections. Um, infl inflation is simply the rate at which uh, prices are rising, uh, or prices for essential commodities are rising. Uh, the report of the Bank of Zambia said over the next eight quarters, inflation is projected to deviate further away from the upper bound of 6 to 8 percent target range due to the lag passed through from the depreciation of the kwacha and the high fiscal deficits. So what are the causes of inflation according to the Bank of Zambia in this report? The causes of inflation according to the Bank of Zambia report is not a global phenomenon, something that's going on around the world, but they said it is a pass through from the depreciation of quarters because our currency continues uh, to decline in, in, in the face of global business. The decline in the in the quacha, uh, uh, because the, the the effect of that lags behind. So when uh, economic activity catches up with the real value of the money, the prices will continue to rise. And they mention also the second issue here is a high fiscal deficits. High fiscal deficit simply means that government having a lot of things to do and not having money to pay for them. Uh, government having a lot of things to do and not having money for them. Now, the projection is from February is for the next eight quarters, which means for the next two years, there will be rising prices of essential commodities in the Republic of Zambia. That's what this statement means. Is the Bank of Zambia is telling us that hyperinflation is on the way and it will continue for the next two years. The prices of commodities will continue to rise and the government will continue failing to meet operational financial obligations. Number four, government's uh, spending power and its fundraising capacity. Uh, government spending power and its fundraising capacity. Again, on page two, there's an important statement of that. This is both treasury bills and government bonds auctions were undersubscribed with bid amounts falling short of amounts on offer by 20% and 70%. So, treasury bills and government bonds are the primary tools and instruments that government uses to entice the private sector to invest in those government instruments so the government can raise money for operational requirements without the need to go to print money. So the Bank of Zambia told us in February that there were significant declines. The statement means the PF government is failing to raise money for its programs. Subscriptions for treasury bills declined by 20%, and government bond subscriptions declined by a whopping 70%. This metric demonstrates the extent to which the business community operating in Zambia or in the regional global economy has no confidence in doing business with the PF government. They do not see government as an institution in which they can put their money and recover it. This predicament is partly due to um, the Zambian government's credit profile exemplified by its default on euro bonds. Uh, government is considered a high credit risk worthless uh, by the and worthless credit worthless by the business community this could also allow us to pause and reflect on the future of the repossessed mopani mines should it need recapitalization if the government already cannot raise money in its primary financial market that causes us to pause uh, 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 on the future of uh, the mines as well 
uh, because they will need recapitalization, research, and investments, and, and, and uh, different things to do, including uh, paying the owners who are behind uh, the scenes uh, as uh, having sold the mine, but they are still in direct control of both output and the selling of those um, um, uh, 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 those uh, commodities, those items. So, the government can come with these lofty plans and lofty things to say, but based on this report, they don't have the capacity to raise money to fund their programs. Their credit profile is, is in, a, in a bad place, uh, uh, thanks to their management style of how they handle money, and that's the situation we have here. Government has no capacity to raise money on the global market. And we are an import-based economy. It means we need the United States dollar in the country. So if the capacity to raise money is not there by the government, who is going to raise money for Zambia? Uh, we are like a high-speed train running out of the rails. Number five, private sector credit. On page three of the MPC statement, the Bank of Zambia told us that credit to the private sector moderated to 8.5% in December year on year from 13.8% in September. Now, it is not clear why the Bank of Zambia is using politically correct language here. Dropping from 13.8% to 8%. 0.5% in a period of nine months is not moderate. This is a drastic decline that should be attributed in part to the government's credit score. If uh, government credit score is in D, which means default, there is a multiplier effect on the private sector. Uh, the attempt to allocate this situation to COVID primarily as the only cause should be dismissed, therefore, with contempt. Uh, the COVID effect was only four of the nine months in question and merely exposed the pre-existing fundamental flaws in our economy's uh, public policy. Uh, the prudent management of the economy uh, of the nation, uh, managing money of the nation, demands that managers prepare for recessions and any economic downturn in the business cycle. That is why we keep money in the reserves, because of the rainy day. It's for things like COVID. But because uh, there was no look into the future, there was no prudence in the management of the finances, we clearly uh, had to uh, experience the effects that were more drastic than we should have. We do not see any evidence of the preparation in the, in the governor's report, and this was not done. Instead, the PF government, for 10 years, went on the rampage to borrow for constructions only, and they drowned the whole financial system in construction structures uh, that do not directly generate money to support the country's economic life. Uh, this lack of wisdom has complicated the private sector's capacity to operate in an economy where they uh, can access cash for working capital and business recapitalization efforts. And basically, what we are saying here is very simple. If you are operating in a business environment where a government is failing to uh, raise money, businesses are not going to be able to raise money. If businesses don't have confidence in the government to invest their resources in the government, uh, then the government can also uh, not raise money. So it has a multiplier effect. Government failing to service its debt will multiply, will have a multiplier effect in the economy on the private sector. And the Bank of Zambia uh, um, um, uh, confirms this uh, in issue number six. Issue number six, uh, which is government debt and external support. Government debt and external support. What did they tell us? On page three of the report, uh, the Bank of Zambia said government debt remains critical to restoring fiscal and macroeconomic stability. Securing external sector support will be central to this cause. Um, the PF government debt is the elephant in the room, and unless it is tackled, the future of the nation is simply bleak 
from the financial standpoint. The global financial markets have balked at the financial management wisdom of our country, uh, whereas the Bank of Zambia uh, uh, prescribes external sector support as remedial, this already has been tried in the last six to seven years. Just ask Honorable Felix Mutati and Honorable Margaret Mwanakat, where they were here in Washington, uh, about their numerous trips to DC to seek uh, such support from the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, the IMF and the World Bank is not your father or your mother where you run to fix the mess that you deliberately created by imprudently creating your own, uh, imprudently uh, uh, mismanaging your own house. They are global business institutions with clear goals and objectives for enhancing sustainable economic growth. Under the PF uh, government, Zambia went out of control to borrow billions of dollars and mostly from China to modernize infrastructure without paying attention to appropriate limits of prudent financial management principles governing the use of borrowed money. Now, let me pause right there. When we borrow at home for the company or for the country, the first things we look at are first things first. We look at our capacity to pay back the money that we've borrowed. We look at our capacity to pay back the money that we borrowed. So, and when we borrow the money that comes from other people, the first thing that we're going to do is to carefully allocate those borrowings to the most productive sectors that will generate the money so that we can be able to pay back. Um, those of you who are Christians like me, I'll remind you of a story in the Bible. The story in the Bible that uh, talks about how to use borrowed money is actually the parable of the talents. Um, uh, two guys went ahead and increased and reproduced what they borrowed, what they got from the owner temporarily, what that were tasked with. That's like borrowing. And one guy went and took his talent and buried it in the sand. Of course. The fundamentals of the story are um, broader than that. But I want to show you that the last guy who went and took borrowed money and buried it is an exemplifies the economic management of the patriotic front for the last 10 years. They took other people's money and buried it in the ground and in the stones. And now the stones have not produced that money back. That's why we see default on those. So what are we trying to say here? They managed these uh, borrowings in a very peculiar way that they can't even use to manage their own personal finances. Now, they are stuck. Going west to seek budget support uh, was the equivalent of borrowing from China and asking America to pay for you or borrowing from Europe and asking America to pay for you. That is not a great way to participate in the global economy. The global economy does not work like that. There is a crisis of government worldview in our country, where the PF government sees the world and where the world is are two different places. Borrowed money, the first metric you calculate is the payback period. How long is it going to take you to recoup the money you have borrowed from your project? They go around the country singing this thing, developmental projects, developmental projects. But every project must be able to pay back the money that you borrowed. We can't just take the entire GDP and cast it in debt and nothing of those, those things is going to give us a payback. That is a lack of wisdom where they see the world and where the world is are two different places and we cannot function as a country with that type of worldview in government number seven number seven is the current account decline the current account decline on page four of the mpc statement says the current account surplus however narrowed to 0 0.6 billion 33% of the GDP from U.S. dollars, 0 0.7 billion, 3.7% of GDP in the third quarter. So in one quarter alone, here, let us replace some words here. Uh, let us replace the word surplus with the word balance. 
And let us replace the word narrowed with the word declined. And let us replace the word billion with the actual dollar amount. Uh, the current account is simply the bank account through which Zambia conducts business with the global economy. It is like the checking account of Zambia. According to the Bank of Zambia governor, the balance in this account for this period under consideration declined from 700,000, uh, 700, 700 million dollars to 600 million dollars. Uh, the BOZ uh, tells us uh, told us that uh, the $100 million in just one quarter went to pay foreign investors in the mining sector in just one quarter alone. In just one quarter alone. So, why is there a decline? The decline is equity payments. These investments you went to attract in the country now have become a sucker on the, the, the current account. So the decline in the current account balance is the payments for, for, for servicing date and the equity payments that you are paying off foreign investors. Let me give you um, a, a practical example. Um, we like a new good shop from South Africa, new shoes in there. And sometimes when we have a mall, we even call it development. But as a global accountant, I'll tell you this for free. This country has been losing in the range of two, billion, two to three billion dollars every single year for nearly 30 years to South Africa. Now, you need money to, do, to, to, put, up, to put up people in school. You need money to, uh, to fix uh, broken infrastructure. How do you let another country rip you off like that? We are doing the same thing with China. And we send about a billion dollars to the Middle East for oil. And we don't take anything there. So uh, this is a bit of a structural problem that requires more deliberate thinking than common sense. Um, and number eight, we, uh, I, I want to talk about the, um, the use of reserves. The use of reserves. Um, on page four, uh, the Bank of Zambia report said gross international reserves declined by 117.7 million dollars to 1.2 million, equivalent to 2.4 months of import cover. End of December 2020, from 1.3 billion at end September, equivalent to 2.3 months the decline was largely on account of foreign exchange interventions and debt servicing now here is where we see the 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 the, the, the reserves is like the savings account of zambia so the bank of zambia basically told us that we are failing to pay for exchange rate interventions due to unsustainable import regime and because we've over borrowed debt so now we are paying debt of zambia we were paying debt when we were paying from the savings account of the country and those resources have gone so much low that we are only counting them in terms of our ability to cover for imports for a few months this is a declining economy that is why the hardships of the people the, the hardships are felt in families on kitchen tables and in every pocketbook in the country because of the managing of that we will put money in that reserve account in that saving account you have money to spend for other things uh, within the economy so what is gross international reserves uh, gross international reserves are just a fancy way of describing the national savings account. Ideally, this money uh, you can only spend when you are in the red or in emergencies at personal level. The Bank of Zambia tells us that the 18 million Zambians uh, and the 18 million Zambians that the national coffers are in, have been in the red, and we are now paying for the foreign money borrowed from China and others from the savings account. And even when we fail to pay, it's because there is no money there.
and that account is now dwindling. Zambia's debts can no longer be paid from our aggregate output or combined business income, but our old earnings in the savings account, which are at this point even no more. Here's a summary of what I've said. In the short to medium term, government interventions are unlikely to yield the projected economic growth of the ERP because the plans are unworkable and the fundamentals of the economy cannot guarantee GDP growth. There is an accumulation of poor government financial decisions that have now restricted government's capacity to intervene or foster sustainable growth in the gross domestic product. Despite the MPC's effort to raise a monetary policy rate adjustments by 50 points uh, uh, basis uh, by 50 basis points to 8.5 percent, substantively increasing the interest rates for borrowing in the economy and reducing the amount of money in circulation, inflation will continue to be high for the next two years. And in the absence of rising incomes, the, there is going to be increased pain in the country. In Zambia, the business community uh, in, in the regional and global economy does not have confidence in doing business with the patriotic front government due to credit worth, worthiness concerns. The government's credit score has, has been um, compounded and multiplied by credit woes for the, as compounded uh, the credit woes for the private sector. Uh, the PF government debt towers over all measurable economic recovery efforts and requires a bailout from foreign financial institutions that have not been forthcoming for the last seven years. Zambia continues to spend all its earnings on imports and equity payments to foreign investors in the mining sector, leaving the reserves as the only way to service the enormous debt stock arising from the efforts to modernize the country's infrastructure. Clearly, all the metrics of measuring economic performance show that the PF government has failed to run the country from the financial standpoint. There are no workable solutions in sight from their seat, from where they sit. And therefore, I would like to make recommendations. Uh, as a fiscal analyst and global accountant, I would like to recommend the following. Number one, Zambia should investigate and institute oversight over the foreign multinational companies borrowing for their business ventures, uh, offering investments in Zambia as their collateral. I say this because the government says they've borrowed uh, around uh, between 15 and 20 billion. And the, the, the debt that we have here uh, from Zambia at the IMF and the World Bank is equivalent to GDP of $27 uh, billion. It is recommended that the nation establishes an independent economic advisory council to produce research-based solutions for Zambia and not common sense. Common sense cannot solve the problems of Zambia. Zambia should shift. Number three, focus from an all-import economy to making products locally where feasible. Number four, Zambia should initiate a creative economic development process focusing on inventors, entrepreneurs, and the capitalist. Development is not crucifying structures on debt that you cannot pay. Five, Zambia should promote, uh, we should promote expansive entrepreneurship, lesser focused on food production and job creation. Number six, the PF should, shouldn't have even uh, offered a candidate in this year's election with the current leadership of President Lungu because of that financial situation. If it was in the United Kingdom, we would say the government should have resigned. But this is Zambia. Uh, there are even changes and dances, and let's see where that goes. It's people, uh, people dancing and driving the car in the ditch. I recommend a commission of inquiry into the PF government contracted debt for all construction projects in the last 10 years. This inquiry must include the investigation and audit of debt contracts, covenants, and the use of the proceeds from the borrowings. Number eight, all the people involved in the running of the country in the last 10 years, if they are still serving in government, which uh, at this point they've retired, uh, should admit failure, resign, and apologize to people of Zambia and not run again. And uh, number nine, let's have a new government with a new strategy and new faces emerge from among the people to pick up the broken pieces and recover Zambia's economic fortunes in our world today. Thank you for listening. Give me some feedback.